watching true crime documentaries. You first start off going like, he didn't do it. Then you're like, oh, maybe, I don't know. Like, the, his parents did what? What the fuck did they make him do? The fucking, what the fuck? I told you he fucking did it. Like, it was like, it was like. <laughs> By the end, you're fucking you sure that whoever did it killed everybody, you know? And women love true crime everything. Women are like 80% of all true crime documentary watchers and listeners because women, are detectives, right? <laughs> Have you ever met a woman that didn't know everything about what's going on? Like, women are born detectives, you know? It's amazing. Like, they just do, like, intelligent gathering. Like, they watch two crime shit together, evidence, because they want to know what's going on. Like, I used to date this girl, and I would be like, I'm gonna go over to my buddy Dave's house, play some poker. And she's like, okay, okay. And I come back, she's like, were you at Dave's? I was like, yeah. And she's like, okay. And then she turned around like Columbo and go, I got one more question for you. <laughs> She'd have a trench coat on for some reason. <laughs> she's never smoked a cigarette in her life. She's like, ah, just a, just a second. Uh, <laughs> amazing. It's amazing. Like, I feel like, like, we shouldn't ever, if, you ever, if you're ever in trouble, never call the cops, just call HBO. Like, apparently, they're the only people that can solve any kind of problem, you know? It's, it's amazing. Yeah, I was dating for a while, I was dating a girl named Greta, which is cool. Uh, the least sexiest name ever. Uh, I like big girls. She was a big girl, she was like 6'1", 180. Uh, the San Francisco 49ers were taking a look at her. <laughs> They need help with a lot of D. She's German, so our safe word is Volkswagen. <laughs> Once in a while, it's like, I want to see your papers. <laughs> I'm the little spoon in our relationship. She's always like, I don't talk like that. I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> this is awesome, though. But I feel like there's been like a gender switch like, I am a very sensitive guy. Like, I will cry at a, like, dog food commercial, you know? Uh, or, like, a This American Life podcast episode. Like, Greta and I were driving. I was listening to a pie. I was just crying. Meanwhile, Greta's leaning out of the car, flipping off cops, you know? She was just like, fuck you, pigs! And I was like, they're leaving a funeral. Maybe this is not... But she's still, she's still a woman, you know? So she loves, like, crystals. Anybody here into crystals? <laughs> awesome. Well, glad you guys are in the back. That's, like, we're gonna put you guys in the back. Like, she, okay, awesome. She's into crystals. I'm not, I don't get, I don't understand what the fuck's going on with crystals. Like, a couple weeks ago, we had that full moon, you know, that, that blood, sex, sugar, magic moon that was happening or something? was happening with that thing? I don't know. And, and Greta was in the kitchen. Well, first of all, she woke me up at like midnight. She's like, it's a full moon. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I'll make coffee. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know what to do. I want to be supportive. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I'll help. You know, 
out. And I go to the kitchen and she's got like a, a, a mason jar full of crystals and she's running like water into it. And I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm making moon water. <laughs> I was like, okay, yes, get some moon juice out here, you know, whatever the fuck that is, and I'm like, and I'm like, what do you, and she's like, you take a mason jar and you fill it with, with water and it has crystals under, and then you put it under the full moon, and I'm like, all you've done is invented Bud Light. <laughs> just shitty tap water in a jar that someone's yelled racist words into. You know? It's all And it's, actually, it's like midnight. I live in San Francisco. She's under the moon putting this like mason jar out there trying to catch moon rays. I live in the hate in San Francisco. The, the hate Ashbury. Even the hippies are like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? But she's into crystals. We were driving in the south. We were in Nashville, Tennessee. And we were driving this, and she, she's like, stop, crystal shop. And I was like, fuck, how did you find the only crystal shop in the South? That's amazing. How did you do that? And we go into this crystal shop, and I don't know if you guys have been into crystal shops, but they're usually like full of incense smoke, you know? There's like 18 cats walking around. <laughs> Nothing's on a shelf, everything's in baskets, you know? There's like weird tablo music going on, like you know? Where's the downbeat? You know? <laughs> trying, to get, trying to blend in. But I don't know if there's other big guys here like myself, but I feel like I'm too big to be in a crystal shop. You know, I'm like, I'm gonna break everything! Just stand in the corner. Like... <laughs> and I looked over and there was a basket of uh, heated healing crystal dildos in the corner. Greta was over there. I was like kicking them. I was like, no, no. Do not go home with these. I can't compete with a heated healing crystal dildo. It plugs in and heats up. I'm done. There's no use for men if that's the fucking thing. And we're hanging out, and she's looking at these little fucking stones, or crystals, I guess. You know, and they have names like Rose Quartz, and Amethyst, even though... That sounds like the name Mike Tyson would name his daughter. You know, Amethyst, you know. <laughs> so, so we're hanging out, and like, there's just curtains everywhere, because like, in crystal shops, it's just all curtains. We're hanging out, and all of a sudden, the curtains open up, and this little tiny... Southern woman comes out, because they're all tiny in the South. And she comes out and she's like, namaste. But she's from the South, so she's like, namaste. <laughs> I'm like, you sure? <laughs> I don't think you mean that. You know? um, and then she's like, uh, what's your name? And I said, my name's Paco, what's your name? And I swear to fucking God, she looked at me and she said, Crystal. And I was like, God! She's talking to Greta, and all of a sudden the curtains open up again, and this little tiny, uh, little tiny man comes out, and you can tell he's not used to customers. He's like, we haven't had customers here since '87. Like he was just not <laughs> expecting anybody. And he had like a Jack Daniels hat on. He had a T-shirt that said "Kill a Commie for Mommy," <laughs> with an ego with an AK-47 in his mouth. <laughs> and he comes over. And he's like, where are y'all from? And I was like, God damn it. I don't want him to say San Francisco. You know, I looked at him, and he had like one good leg and one wooden leg like a pirate. And, and I was like, well, we're from San Francisco. And he's like, you suck dick. I was like, nope, that's my podcast. He's like, he's like, 
like you gay? Like I'm not, I'm here with my girlfriend. She's looking at hey, healing crystal dildos. I'm not gay just because I'm from San Francisco. You've got a wooden leg, that doesn't make you a table. You know, like, <laughs> reunion. Yeah, I know what you guys are thinking. Isn't he 50? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. You seem crazy or something. What the fuck? Late lower. I start kindergarten at 10. So. I never thought I would be asked to go to my high school reunion. Like, uh, the thing is, is you get that letter in the mail. You guys have been to your high school reunion, right? Yeah. Lloyd Norris is in the house or something. You know? You get that letter in the mail, and I, I got that letter, and I was like, fuck, I only have six months to actually do something with my life. Like, oh, fuck. I got, is there a six-month dental school I can go to or something? Because I know I'm going to see my arch nemesis, Steve, you know? And he's going to be like, what are you doing? Like, Steve, what are you doing? I'm a successful lawyer. What are you doing? Like, I get paid in beer tickets. I, that's pretty much what happens with me, you know, like, and I never thought I'd be asking in my high school, I had a shitty time, put you guys together if you had a shitty time in high school. Where's, where's my Kalamazoo Central people at? Yeah. My favorite thing is I said, put your hands together, and that guy back there raised his hand. Uh, he still can't follow directions. Still bad. In high school, I got beat up. Make fun of. Nobody would talk to me. To make matters worse, I was homeschooled. Uh, dad's an asshole. My mom is cool, though. Put your hands together for moms. Oh man, that's awesome. That's so sweet. You guys are sweet. Do you know how little boys grow up to be funny guys? because our moms are fucking insane. <laughs> any, any women here have a funny husband or a boyfriend? <laughs> Is his mom fucking nuts? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you have not met Deborah. Oh my God. What a trip, that lady is, yeah. Um, this is not the body of a gay man, you know, like, this is Kirkland's signature, so. Don't pretend you don't shop at Costco, Kalamazoo! You're my fucking people! I know who you are. I've seen you at the sample table. Don't fucking... Don't front on me right now. Don't big time me. We're all having, we're all on the same level here. Costco's the fucking best! Man, you're like, give me a keg of mayonnaise, uh, take a quart of tequila, four tires, and an eight foot hot dog. Just call it a day. Costco's the fucking best, especially for dudes, because they have that trough of pants, you know? They just have a mountain of pants, and you're just like, I'll take 12. They're like six bucks. Try them on at home. You know? like, I don't even know if they have like a dressing room at Costco. You're like, putting on it's like, get up, stop staring at me, Stacy, next to the pretzels, I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Give me some room. Costco's fucking awesome, but it makes me anxious, man. It makes me a little, anybody here have anxiety? Yeah. Oh, yeah, awesome. Everyone, it's, uh, everyone next to the bar, apparently. Yeah. Next to the exit, next to the bar. I like how people with anxiety found the, found the energy to woo for that. Most of them just like, I have anxiety. <laughs> Costco gives me anxiety, not because there's like 10 to 20,000 people in line in front of you at any Costco. You know what makes me really anxious about Costco? Is that lady at the end with the fucking highlighter. You know? You know, you're just like, fuck, who's got the receipt? <laughs> oh, fuck, we're gonna have to live here in Costco. You know? square boxes you give us, even though everything at Costco is round, you know, like, I don't know, you're just shoving that shit in there. You know what else gets, gets me anxious? Netflix. Netflix, because of that fucking 20 second countdown that they got on that thing. 
That is the worst. You're like, oh, fuck, I don't know. It's episode two, should we binge watch? I gotta go to bed. I don't know, I have 10 more seconds. Make some of me popcorn. Nine, eight, and check the dog out. Six, five, five, fuck it. I'm in, baby, I'm in. What's going on? That shit's too much. But yeah, my mom, she yeah, moved to San Francisco. It's not like you're flying into San Francisco, you're going into SFO, and the pilot's like, Phew. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be landing in San Francisco in 20 minutes if you could please pull out your glitter and rainbows <laughs> and set your dicks to an upright and locked position. <laughs> Thank you. It doesn't happen like that. It's not like gay men are walking around San Francisco like Jehovah's Witnesses or something. <laughs> trying to recruit you for their religion. They don't come to your door and be like, excuse me, sir, have you accepted cock as your personal savior? It doesn't happen like that. So, fuck Grand Rapids. Fuck Grand Rapids. instructor. faggot by a 16 year old in Kentucky, you know. I'm like, do your homework, Scott! Like, and salsa clubs are sexy places, you know, it's like sexy places. And, and there's always one guy that can dance really well. There's always a line of ladies ready to dance with him, and he's just like, one, three, four. Now you're pregnant. Who wants to be pregnant? You know, just like. <laughs> Impregnating women with his hips, you know, his dance moves. He's just spanking their bachata, like, BAM! <laughs> Who wants meringue on their face? <laughs> I made a big mistake, Kalamazoo, Shakespeare's, I made a big mistake. I went back to surprise her for Valentine's Day last year. So that was a big mistake. Women are always like, surprise me. Surprise me. And then you surprise them, they're like, what the fuck did you tell me? You know, like, oh, I don't know. So I went back for Valentine's Day and I got her a spa package. She got her hair did, she got her fingernails did. It was the best 15 bucks I ever spent. <laughs> Groupon can be amazing. So. And she knows me, so when I got back to the crib, she didn't have roses going from the living room to the bedroom, she had M&Ms, you know? <laughs> And I was just eating that like a horny E.T., you know, just like... <laughs> Wasn't my finger I had out, you know what I mean? And I get to the bedroom, and she's got lingerie on, and she's dancing, she's got Pandora on, even though she's too cheap to get ad-free Pandora. So she has to stop dancing when the commercials come out. <laughs> She's dancing and all of a sudden like, hey Pandora listeners. It was awesome because she 
start giving me a lap dance? Now this is like between me and the fellas, but when your girlfriend gives you a lap dance, it's kind of like having a friend come over to fix the plumbing. You're like, maybe we should get a professional. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, dude. What the fuck are you doing right now? Like, I don't know if you got the tools for this. Oh, <laughs> uh, there's so many couples breaking up right now. Being back in town, uh, <clears throat> the girl that gave me my first hand job is here. I'm from Coldwater. And they looked at me and they leaned in and they said, the weirdest queers come from Coldwater. <laughs> I was like, okay, take the car. Just take the fucking car. Man. Yeah, fucking Kalamazoo, fucking Michigan, it's awesome. Uh, anybody here have kids? Yeah. <laughs> awesome, is that why you're here? That's why we're here, we have kids. Are they in the car? You have the windows rolled down just a little bit with some Steely Dan on? All right, it's fine. It's fine. My ex has got kids, she had two little girls, still does. Like little kids are, I didn't understand like about how little kids can get in your heart. Just two little girls like, I'm like just an alcoholic comedian type. I've never been married, never had kids. Like, I didn't understand, you know? And like, I got to know her kids a lot. Because one of the things is when you're hanging out with little kids, is you gotta, you gotta hold their hands no, way, no matter where you go. You're always holding on their hands. You go to a supermarket, you're just kicking shopping carts out of the way. You know, everyone looks like a fucking predator. It's like, I have one mission. Get this girl back to her fucking mom in one piece. You know, it becomes like a movie. You know, like a World War II movie. And uh, I got this, you know, little girl, and then her, her littlest one had the greatest voice I'd ever heard in my life, because she had a, I had a speech impediment when I was growing up. I would say things like, yes, I'd like a Wowie Pop, you know, <laughs> like, hello, yes. Like, her little girl, she, uh, we went out to play one night, and she's like, hey, can you put me up in that tree? <laughs> and so I picked her up, and I put her on this tree branch, and she's like, ouch, you're hurting my arm. I'm like, what are you, a prospector from an old western? <laughs> like, the fuck talks like that? I, uh, 
I've been really happy lately because I finally cut the cord on cable. You guys do know that? I finally cut the cord on cable. It's awesome. Because you don't need it anymore. Like out west, we have Comcast. You guys have Comcast out here? Yeah, we have Comcast. I got tired of paying like two to three hundred dollars a day for cable. Yeah. For shit that I would never fucking watch. And when I tried, when I tried to get rid of it, like they emailed me, they called me, they even came to my fucking door. And I opened the door and like, hey, we're from Comcast. And I slammed the door and I was like, please hold. Yeah. Awesome, because you have all these things. You have Netflix, Hulu, fucking Amazon. Like you can do whatever you want. But I'm like old enough to remember, like when when pre-cable. You know, we had two cable. We had two channels basically, or three channels. And I remember my when my dad first got cable when I was like 13 years old, and it was the best present someone ever could ever give a 13 year old. Because you guys know what happens when you got cable back then. It came with. Showtime, After Hours. You remember that shit? And Skinamax? Skinamax is the fucking best, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? That shit was awesome. It's not like he paid for it. It was still all fucking scrambly. But my brother and I... My brother and I would set our fucking clocks for three in the morning. We would wake up and try to sneak past our parents' bedroom, like we're in World War II, giving each other signals and shit, you know? And we would get down into the living room, and my brother, because I was the younger one, would have me dial it in, and he'd give me instructions to try to get to stop being wavy, you know? He'd be like, more to the right, more to the left. I'd be like a safe cracker trying to get porn. You know, I was like, is that a baby's arm? Is that a nipple? Is that a you know, like, <laughs> And he would stop for you saying, like, yes! It's just three men and a baby. Or something, you know? <laughs> to this day, when my cable goes out, I get an erection. That's how it's like. <laughs> By the way, that was the best I ever hit on anybody in my life earlier. Because <laughs> it's hard. Like, now I'm single. Like, you ever, anybody here single? Oh yeah, like four of you. Fuck you guys, man. <laughs> Jesus, I'm in the Midwest. They're like, I've been married for 38 years. Oh man, I'm single, man. Been on Tinder and Bumble or Crumble or Fumble or whatever the fuck that is. Plenty of fishes, no fishes, J-Date, Farmer Date, Farmer.com. I don't even fucking care anymore. Like, I remember, like, when you, had, like, when you had, like, when I was coming up, you had to have an opening line, because there was no online dating. So the only online thing was your line that you would give a girl at the bar, you know? And I was fucking horrible at it. I'd see a girl at the bar, and I'd just be like, no! <laughs> but if I'd get a girl's number, it, you know, like, there was no cell phones, I'm like, what's your number? And she'd be loud at the bar, and she'd be like, 415, <laughs> numbers in your head, like an Iroquois code talker or something, you know? <laughs> and then there was lots of rules, you know, your best, your buddy would be like, oh, you got her number, cool, don't call her on Tuesday, nobody fucks on Tuesdays. <laughs> Remember that? Remember all those rules? You gotta give her four days, you don't want to look desperate. It's like, well, I am desperate! <laughs> there was all these fucking rules that I had to happen, you know? And then you'd call and you're just like, please don't answer, please don't answer, please don't answer. It's like the last thing you want is them to fucking pick up the phone, you know? And then she picks up the phone and you're just like, ah! <laughs> ah! You turn into like Bobcat Goldthwait for some reason. <laughs> you know? No idea what to say. But people are confident now when you're like texting, you have a monitor, you know, people are confident when they're behind monitors and screens. People will say any kind of shit, you know? I was texting with this girl and I said something I've never said before in my life. I was like, back that ass up. You know, like... I was like, I want to tongue punch your stink star. You know, just like... Just things I would 
remember it. I was just like, eggplant, 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 peach, peach, peach. I don't even speak emoji. I don't even know what that fucking means. I need a date, like a 25 year old just decipher for me, you know? She hit me in the back with horse head, diamond, pineapple. I'm like, what is that? Are you hungry? Are we breaking up? Is that anal? Someone fill me in. <laughs> Hard out there. Thank you. It's fun being from Michigan. Because people are like, when I say I'm from Michigan, they're like, oh, and I, you know, you gotta do this thing. You know? You grow up doing it. And then, like, the Michigan accent is so much fun, too. Because in Michigan, man, we can turn a one syllable word into, like, a four syllable word. We're like, oh, no. No. Oh, my God. No. It's like, oh, I, O, E, O, A. Oh, no. Oh, my God. That's big time. That is big time. You know what happened last night? Good sleeping weather. That's one of my favorite Michigan sounds. That's good sleeping weather. How cold was it? 55 degrees? That's good sleeping weather. <laughs> Seventy-two. That's good fucking sleeping out there. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm from here. I think that's Florida down there. Pretty sure. You guys ever live with someone stupid? Yes. I mean, come on. You guys ever live with someone stupid? It's. Well, you guys ever live with someone stupid? It's the worst fucking thing in the world, isn't it? I'm really tired of stupid fucking people. I'm tired of stupid people. And, yes, thank you. And one of the reasons I'm tired of stupid people because I have a stupid roommate, and it sucks. Yes, my career's going well. I have a roommate and a chore wheel. Uh, but I hate, I, you know, like, when you live with someone stupid, you can't watch something complicated. Like, I love Game of Thrones. You know? And you know Game of Thrones just ended, so I was really fucking invested in those three really shitty last episodes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, what? Yeah, that's, that's basically everything I did watching Game of Thrones for the last three episodes. Like, what? Are you fucking kidding me? It's been eight fucking years of my life. So, like, I have a stupid roommate, and I want to watch Game of Thrones, and I hear him come home, and I'm like, fuck. So I know what's gonna happen. He's gonna sit down and be like, who's that? What does she do? What's his name? What happened over there? Pause it, rewind it, again and again. Go from the beginning. I don't read! You're like, it's a fucking dragon! <laughs> and I'm like, I have a roommate named Kenny. Kenny, not Kenny with an E, but Kenny with an I. Like skinny without an S. Kenny, that is the dumbest name in the fucking world. Kenny, I'll call his name Kenny. I'll come in the room like a golden retriever. Like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Are you going for a drive? Put my head out the window. Kenny's so fucking dumb. Kenny is dumb. Like we were driving. Well, I was driving. He's too dumb to drive. We were driving by this marquee in San Francisco, and he looked up. And he said, "I want to see this band. They play all over town." And I said, "What's the what, what's the name?" And he said, "Tony Iggett." I looked up and I said, "That says tonight." <laughs> It's fucking dumb, man. He's one of those people, too. You know those people that don't... Okay, there's a lot of things. You know those people that tell a story and make you do all the fucking work? Where they're like, hey, you remember when we went to that one place with that one guy? You know, and he drove that one car, and you're like, I don't know, it's your fucking story! Like, why is this a mad lib all of a sudden? You know, like, why do I have to fill in all the blanks? He's also one of those guys that doesn't know any fucking lyric to any song. Like, he'll, he, the other day he was singing, I got two chickens and parrot ties. I'm like, no. That is not the lyric to that fucking song. Chickens don't wear parrot ties, man. And he gets his sayings wrong. We got to an argument. He said, Paco, sometimes you just gotta let guide dogs be guide dogs. 
I'm like, Kenny, it's bygones be bygones. <laughs> Although that is a good sentiment, you should just let a guide dog be a guide dog. We're at work, we got places to go. I also simultaneously grew up in three rivers. Oh yeah? Oh man. I got the like small town racist shit on lock. You know? Cold water and three rivers. Look at this sassiness that just happened. What just happened over here? You guys handle this sass? You want a cup of this sass? Can you handle this sass? I don't think you can. Um, I got really sassy for a second. Look out, folks. I grew up in Three Rivers, and, and my mom married my stepfather, who's African-American. So I grew up in an all-white racist town with a white mom, a Hispanic-sounding name, and a black stepfather whose last name was White. <laughs> Why am I a comedian today? <laughs> Growing up in a black family was cool. It's cool. Taught me a couple things. There are two different kinds of white people in this world. There are white people who get more black around their black friends. You know those guys? Like Roger from accounting. You know, has one black friend. Says things like, slow your roll. <laughs> this is the Tupac for some reason. <laughs> you know, those guys. And then there's like white people like myself, and I would imagine most of you guys. Uh, I get more white around my black friends. <laughs> you guys are like, this better be fucking funny, dude. <laughs> You guys tighten up with this joke. But I get more black. I don't know how to be that cool. I, I get more, I'd rather, I get more white around my black friends. I'll see a black friend and I'll turn into like, I don't know, like Mitt Romney or something. I'll see a black friend and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> that is neat. <laughs> Everything you're doing is neat. That is, that is cool. Is that your word or our word? Cool. <laughs> I'll use it. That is, that is a twerk it out. <laughs> I want to touch your hair. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm single. That's why I'm a comedian. I made a big mistake with my ex. She came out to San Francisco to visit me, and she was like, take me somewhere new. Take me somewhere new. Girls always want you to take them somewhere new. So I did. I took her to this lesbian bar in my house. Uh, big mistake. It's called the clit. The problem was I couldn't find it. I just kept driving around. I was too proud. Find it. You guys have been fucking awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming out. Really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. So put your hands together for Bob. To introduce, uh, we have a surprise guest here tonight. Uh, this guy and his friend are fucking amazing, super talented, uh, amazing, smart, talented, funny, uh, extraordinary, iconic. It's the list goes on and on. But put your hands together for the very funny, the next senator from the state of Michigan, Mr. Stephen Lynch and Rod Powell. 